rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. Now, it takes many billions of years to create a galaxy, like the Milky Way galaxy, with 100 billion stars, many billions of years old. But the James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang that are up to 10 times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy. That shouldn't happen. There should not be primordial galaxies that are bigger than the Milky Way galaxy that are only half a billion years old. Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope has opened a mystery box we didn't expect to find. Galaxies that are more massive and chemically mature than standard models predict, appearing when the universe was still in its infancy. One standout, GZ9P3, sits at a redshift of 9.3, meaning we see it as it was only about 510 million years after the Big Bang. These findings matter because mass and chemical richness take time to build, and our models say there shouldn't have been enough. Early analyses show rapid star formation, swift enrichment, and even hints of a past galactic merger. The results are still being tested, but they raise a bigger question. If galaxies like this could form so soon, what else about the early universe might we have gotten wrong? The early giants that shouldn't exist. How could can galaxies larger than the Milky Way already exist just 500 million years after the Big Bang? Our models say there shouldn't have been enough time for them to form, let alone grow to that scale. Yet, JWST has spotted not just one, but a group of six enormous galaxies from this early period. Among them, one stands out, GZ9P3. This galaxy doesn't just appear large, it shows signs of a surprisingly complex past. To put this in perspective, think of the universe at this time as a newborn. Cosmic structures were just starting to form from the first clouds of gas. According to our standard timelines, galaxies back then should have been small, irregular, and still gathering their first stars. Instead, GZ9P3 is already massive, comparable in size to a modern spiral galaxy, and chemically evolved. It is as if you walked into an area where seeds had only been in the soil for a week, and instead of sprouts, you found a mature forest with dense foliage and fallen leaves. Something about how we think galaxies grow is clearly missing. The chemical makeup of GZ9P3 deepens the puzzle. When astronomers examined its light, they found distinct fingerprints of elements such as silicon, carbon, and iron. These don't appear spontaneously. They are forged in the intense heat and pressure inside stars, especially the most massive ones, and scattered into surrounding space during supernova explosions. For those elements to be present in such quantity, the galaxy had to go through multiple rapid cycles of star birth and star death. In other words, not only did it form stars early, it formed and destroyed them at an accelerated pace. That that's problem number one for our models. The early universe, as we currently simulate it, simply doesn't give galaxies this much time to reach such maturity by 500 million years. In today's nearby galaxies, chemical enrichment is usually a gradual process. Here, it seems compressed into a fraction of the time we expected, suggesting that either star formation was happening far more efficiently or under conditions we haven't properly accounted for. Then there's the structural clue inside GZ9P3. Careful imaging shows it has two bright central regions, two galactic nuclei. This is a hallmark of a major merger, meaning at least two proto-galaxies had already collided and combined the material. Mergers can be messy and drawn out, often taking hundreds of millions of years from first contact to final fusion. This implies that not only had multiple galaxies already formed so soon after the Big Bang, but they had time to meet, interact, and fully merge into a single massive system. Current simulations don't accommodate that sequence happening so fast. Researchers comparing these JWST observations with established 
established formation models see a huge gap in most models, galaxies this size and chemical composition don't appear until at least a billion years after the Big Bang. We're finding them twice as early. That's like predicting you'll see your first oak tree after 10 years, only to find a sprawling forest in just five. The mismatch tells us our story of the early cosmos, how gas cooled, clumped and built stars needs rethinking. And GZ9P3 is not unique. The other large galaxies spotted from this era show similar traits, unexpectedly high mass, abundant heavy elements, and signs of mature structures. If these were rare outliers, we could chalk it up to unusual local conditions. But seeing multiple cases points toward a systematic issue in how we model the first billion years. I spent all my life developing a particular uh, a theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned, I welcome that because that's how we move forward. That's how we make progress in science. The real shock is that these early giants aren't only stretching the limits of our theoretical framework, they could be breaking it. They force us to confront questions about the rate of star formation, the behavior of gas in the young universe, and the timeline for large-scale structures to emerge. They may even tie into the other big problems in cosmology, the ones that aren't about single objects, but about how the whole universe seems to behave differently depending on how we measure it. Because if galaxies like GZ9P3 can build themselves in record time, we have to ask, what else have we been miscalculating about the cosmos? The tensions that won't go away. What if every time we measured the universe, we got a different answer? Imagine stepping on a scale, checking your weight, stepping off, and then stepping right back on, only to get a completely different number. Scientists face a similar problem when they try to measure some of the most basic properties of the cosmos. The first issue is something called the Hubble tension. This is all about finding the Hubble constant, or Hodge zero, the number that tells us how far the universe is expanding right now, one way to figure it out is to look far back in time to the afterglow of the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background. This gives us a value based on how the universe looked almost 14 billion years ago. Another way is to measure it more directly in the nearby universe using what's called the Cosmic Distance Ladder. That method relies on standard candles like type IJ Supernova A, bright, predictable explosions, to judge distances and calculate how expansion has changed over time. The surprise is that the early universe method and the direct method Method don't agree. They disagree by enough that it can't just be blamed on a minor error. Then comes the S8 tension. This one is about how matter, dark matter and normal matter, clumps together across the universe. Simulations using our best cosmological model, say galaxies, should be about 7% more clustered and 5% more clumpy than we actually observe. These numbers may sound small, but in precision cosmology, that's a gulf wide enough to force a rethink. The S8 parameter is a measure that combines the overall density of matter with how it's spread out. If it's too low, structures form more slowly. If it's high, they form faster. Our current model predicts a higher number than telescopes measure, putting the theory at odds with the data. These tensions aren't going away with better instruments either. In fact, new JWST data has confirmed the higher Hubble constant values first seen by Hubble when looking at more recent parts of the universe. That means the disagreement between the early universe and late universe measurements is holding strong. If the universe is expanding faster right now than our models say it should, then galaxies should also have formed much more quickly. Which takes us right back to the problem of those oversized galaxies we've seen with JWST. Our models can't handle both realities at the same time. 
Think of it like a watch that's consistently 10 minutes fast, no matter how carefully you reset it. If different people check the time in different ways, one sinking to an atomic clock, another comparing with a satellite, and still find it's always off by 10 minutes, the issue isn't user error. The issue is in the watch itself. In cosmology, that watch is our standard model of the universe. The S8 problem deepens the challenge. The Flamingo simulation some of the most detailed we've ever run, combine dark matter physics with the complex behavior of ordinary matter, like the way gas cools and stars form. Despite all that complexity, they still overshoot the clustering and clumpiness we see in reality. In other words, adding more detail to the simulation doesn't reconcile it with observations. This holds even when researchers vary assumptions about star formation, galaxy feedback, or dark matter behavior. The mismatch persists. What's striking is that these two tensions, Hubble and S8, are very different measurements. One comes from timing the expansion of the universe, the other from the fine texture of its structure. Yet both point to the same unsettling conclusion. The numbers don't match our model, and they're not errors confined to a single telescope or an outdated method. They're now cross verified by independent teams and multiple instruments. That means the possibility of a systematic mistake is shrinking, and the idea that we're missing something fundamental is growing. It's tempting to think that maybe a small tweak could align everything, like finding the missing gear in a machine. But so far, no adjustment, changing the assumed amount of dark energy, modifying the properties of dark matter, or refining our galaxy modeling has brought both tensions into agreement at once. If the problem isn't in our tools or our math, we have to consider the bigger possibility. Because if the tools and models keep failing to explain what we're seeing, maybe the real issue lies in the framework itself, in how the universe actually works at the deepest level. Beyond the standard model, radical ideas on the table. What if these strange galaxies are telling us that we've been watching the wrong movie about the universe? Not just a scene here or there out of order, but a completely different script playing out in the cosmos while we've been following a plot that isn't the real one. Some researchers think the explanation might be within reach by tweaking parts of the current model. One idea is that dark matter, the invisible mass shaping the growth of galaxies, might behave a little differently than we've assumed. Maybe it clumps together sooner, or interacts with normal matter in ways we've overlooked. That could speed up the building of massive galaxies in the early universe. Another possibility is that galaxy mergers happened more often and more efficiently in the first few hundred million years. If multiple proto-galaxies collided in rapid succession, they could create giants like GZ9P3 much earlier than our current formation timelines allow. But others are considering far more radical ideas. There are proposals suggesting a mirror universe exists alongside ours, where time runs in reverse relative to us. In that scenario, both universes could have emerged from the same Big Bang expanding in opposite time directions. What seems like impossibly fast formation in our cosmos might look perfectly normal from the perspective of this mirror realm. Then there's the notion that our universe could be carrying remnants from before the Big Bang. Some cosmologists suggest that the Big Bang might not have been an absolute beginning, but rather a transition from an earlier state. If that's true, the seeds of structure, dense regions likely to spawn galaxies, could have been set long before the hot, dense state we call the start. These seeds would give the early universe a head start in building massive systems. An even stranger idea is that the universe might be finite and curved in a way that allows light to 
travel in full loops. In such a cosmos, some of the ancient light we see could be a repeat, an echo of events that happened earlier or even elsewhere in the same universe. This connects to what some call the cosmic heartbeat concept, periodic signals in the distribution of matter created by sound waves in the early plasma could echo back in unexpected ways if space is curved just right. A related thought is cosmic light reflection. If there are large-scale structures at the edge of the observable universe, perhaps caused by space curving back on itself or interacting with unseen dimensions, they might bounce some of the earliest light back toward us. We might be detecting this reflected light and mistaking it for fresh signals from newly formed galaxies. That could explain why certain deep field images catch objects that seem too evolved for their supposed age. These ideas sound speculative because they are. They often run up against the limits of what we can test with current instruments. Still, they have gained space in serious discussion, largely because the mismatch between observation and simulation is so persistent. When multiple independent measurements keep showing the same conflicts. It becomes harder to assume the model only needs a small repair. Imagine for a moment that light we detect today left its source before the Big Bang in our conventional timeline which would mean our idea of time's direction might be incomplete. Events we place after the beginning might have precursors beyond our current cosmological horizon. The very concepts of before and after would have to be rethought for the universe as a whole. Scientists separate these theories into two broad camps. In one are the adjustments that could be tested relatively soon changes to dark matter physics, alternate galaxy formation pathways, or revised early universe conditions. In the other are the truly fringe ideas that would require an entirely new set of physical laws or evidence from observations we can't yet make. Both camps are active because right now, neither our data nor our theory gives an easy answer. Whether we're closing in on a major scientific breakthrough or about to rewrite the physics we thought was settled, something fundamental is clearly at stake, and those massive early galaxies could be the first unmistakable sign that the universe is stranger and more complex than the story we've been telling ourselves. These impossible galaxies aren't just rare oddities. They could be the first real fractures in the story we've been telling about the universe's past. If our models can't explain how such massive, mature systems appeared so early, then the rules themselves may need rewriting. JWST is still gathering data, and each new deep field image could push the cracks wider. Following these updates isn't just for astronomers. Anyone watching is witnessing a possible turning point in science. If the universe is already breaking rules we thought were absolute, we have to ask what else might be waiting in the shadows of the cosmos?